right there after the sermon, we'll shut that off and have communion in here. In my preparation for today, uh, you know, maybe I'm a little over dramatic. I don't know, but I always ask the Lord, okay, what do you want me to preach about on Sunday? God knows who's going to be here way before I do, and maybe even before you uh, know. So, but uh, I thought of different things I could talk about. How to read your Bible through the year, how to do uh, discipline uh, in prayer, etc. As it's a new year. And the Lord said, I want you just to stress about my relationship with you and them. And uh, uh, that's kind of the bottom line. You know, there's, there's many that come in His name that. Don't know him, and uh, but they use his name, and preachers just uh, fall into that as bad as uh, maybe lay or congregational folks. So today's lesson is uh, from the book of Hebrews, the eleventh chapter. That chapter is known by many; they call it the Hall of Famers of Faith. And I'm just going to read a couple verses about. Uh, faith in the first uh, couple verses in that 11th chapter. Remember Jesus said to his disciples, I wonder how much faith will be here when I come back. And, uh, you know, we're, we're really in a turbulent time in our history as a country and uh, as a uh, church struggles too with this pandemic and uh, it, it just seems to be different than how we were raised and how we were prepared in, as young kids, young people, and how we see ourselves right now. You know, I, I mentioned that in the prayer time that waiting out in the car uh, for doctor's appointments until your appointment is a then you go in, you go out. Uh, it's almost a depersonalizing, and some people are cracking uh, with that. And how do you hang on to your faith? And maybe I need to understand what faith is so I can hang on to it. Uh, a lot of people say I can't believe as a Christian, but they believe in people. Uh, they put their faith and trust in people, and. Wow, I don't know about you, but that's been a little scary for me. Uh, after I uh, went before uh, the Board of Ordained Ministry for an examination, uh, my mentor asked me to stop by and stop by his place. He said, well, what did they tell you? I said, well, they said I need to trust people more. He said, well, what was your response? I said, I have, I have problems with that, okay? Some people I've gotten close to have really done a number of things, hurt my feelings, or backed off from me, and so I feel better with a little distance. He said, keep that, Frank, keep that. Um, not to be mistrustful of everyone, but to find a balance in there someplace that uh, you know in the final end, if it's between you and them, it's probably not gonna be you. <laughs> It'll be them. Uh, but with God, it's different. When we have faith with God and faith in God and learn about Him, whether it's through reading, whether it's through mentors, whether it's through being in church and hearing the messages and building upon our faith, we know the character of God and we know that God works with the impossible and deals with us in our unbelief. As always, I'm going to say, I'm going to read the first three verses of the, chap the 11th chapter of the book of Hebrews, but it's always wise to go back in the preceding chapter and read what led up to what these words were intended to mean. And then, of course, read the rest of the 11th chapter as well. Just a suggestion, but before we get to the reading of verse 1 through 3, I'm going to back up kind of practice my own preaching that in verse uh, 35 of the 10th chapter of the book of Hebrews, it says, Cast not away therefore your confidence, 
which hath great recompense of reward. For ye have need of patience, that after you have done the will of God, you might receive the promise. For yet a little while, and he that shall come will come and not tarry. Now the just shall live by faith. But if any man draw back, my soul shall not have pleasure in him. But we are not of them who draw back unto perdition, but of them that believe to the saving of the soul. And here's the emphasis for today on chapter 11, verse 1 to 3. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it the elders obtain a good report. Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we ask for your eyes. See what you see, Lord. To see the word of God, see within our hearts, Lord, as you look within our hearts. See within our minds to comprehend the wisdom of God as we read these words. Help us this day, Lord, to rededicate, renew our lives in you. For we ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm really surprised at how much doubt uh, is in the church world. Okay, I'm not uh, saying that uh, any of you in here have uh, expressed doubt to me. I'm kind of speaking universal. Uh, from my experience in Bible studies or preaching, that some folks uh, have doubt that they're going to make it uh, to heaven. Okay? When in fact, if you're with Jesus, you're on the way. Okay? You're in the way. You're working with him in the way. And it's no longer, I can't do any works. You know, I, I know when I answered the call of God, I said, Okay, God, how do I prepare? Uh, should I hear some people say they pray three hours a day? Can I do that? Man, oh man, that was so hard to do. And I remember one day praying, God, this is really hard. And he said, it's hard for me to watch you. Okay? Obedience is better than sacrifice, Frank. Did I tell you to do that? You thought that would do something that... I want you to renew, rededicate your life to me, Frank. And I'm going to speak to you, and I want you to speak to me, and that's the kind of relationship we're going to have. And so I don't think that was restricted just for me. You know, some folks, even in the church, say, you talk to God. Well, yeah, he talks to me, okay? I wouldn't get up and even try to tell you the things of God had I not talked with God or not been in prayer with God. I certainly realize that part of being a pastor is not doing my own thing, not looking at a calendar and saying, okay, this is when I got to preach there, there. Having just gone through uh, Christmas, I know there are certain things that the church gears up for and has an expectation. So we're going to zero in the narratives about the Bible, uh, uh, the stable, the birth of Christ, and you know, and we have certain holidays that are focused, yeah, and 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 God lays that out. But there are times like today in which He says, "I want to get really personal." Okay? Now, when I tell you, Frank, in Revelation three twenty, it says, "Behold, I stand at the door and knock." Listen, Frank. I'm listening. He's knocking. What's God want? Okay. Some folks feel like, oh, I'm in trouble. Okay. Others feel like, man, that's cool. God wants to talk with me. The one who put the stars in the sky, the one who put the moon at night to guide us, and the one who put the sun to shine upon us wants to talk with me. Is he stopping doing those things? 
I don't know. In my faith, when I opened the door and let him in, I added so many questions to ask. Okay? And as I asked, he answered. The big one was why? Why this? Why that? And how do you do this and how do you do that? And strangely enough, God said, let me take care of the hows and the whys first. I want you to just relax on that one, okay? I just want you to focus on me. I want you to praise me. I want you to, when you know you've sinned and, and come short of the glory of God, I want you to be honest with me and tell me about it. I want you to come clean, okay? You'll need me. You'll need me not only for forgiveness, but you'll need me. And without faith, Frank, you know, what is it? What is faith, Frank? I want you to explore that. I want you to look into that. I don't know who gave this to me. I've been trying to find out uh, at my house. It was a Christmas gift, okay? It's called the Expanded Bible. I must confess, I, like maybe some of you, put this in my library and haven't read it, okay? I'm comfortable with a couple other translations, and, but I opened it up and looked in there about faith, okay? I looked in particular the 11th chapter of which we're talking about. Man, I'm going to be reading this one from now on, okay? along with the other ones that, that I understand God's voice and I understand clearly what he's saying. It says in this expanded version, and what it does, it gives the scripture, but it expands on it so that even I can understand it. Faith means, boy, did that help right off the bat when I read that. Faith means being sure the assurance or reality of something that is real, even if we don't see it. The conviction, it says. Remember, for God approved great people who lived in the past, the people of old, the ancients, our spiritual ancestors, they understood that the whole world was made by God's command so that when we see something that we can't be seen it was not made by visible hands that still might mess your mind up a little bit but it helped mine to understand that what I see has not always been what God's doing or has done okay? how can you look at your heart how can you look at someone else's heart? How can you look at someone else's intentions and motives? Well, we do it because we're not judging them. We're just checking the fruits. We kind of play with the semantics a little bit. But when I just keep it between me and God, not in a selfish way that it's me and God against the world. That's not the case. He sends people to you to help you, to mentor you, to love you. Help you understand love. I think I said it here one other time. I was preaching a revival one time in little old West Virginia. Okay? Middle-born West Virginia. You can't get there from here. Okay? And it is rough to pump sunlight in there. It's I preached the revival and was told by the preacher, you know, we don't have any money, so we're not gonna pay you. Uh, so, and it's hard to get here. I had two blowouts on my tires that week in a revival. Well, they found some way to buy me new two tires. And they made the big cape for me to fit across the hood of my truck that says the way of the cross leads home. We chow down to eat right there after the revival, okay? It was raw, and I remember uh, the last night of revival that I said, you know, it's been hard for me to accept love, okay? It really is, okay? 
thought love was something that predators use on other people to manipulate things. So I'm always a little off with that. And my dad was a rough man, he was a tough man. He didn't finish high school, he worked construction. If I cut myself, he'd say, put that in your pocket, don't let anybody know you're stupid enough to cut your hand. Things like that, okay? Harsh, harder stuff. As a man of God, you can't operate like that. I can't go in the hospital and say, you know, you wouldn't be in there if you just, you know, you can't. God wants a tender heart. He wants to tenderize your heart. And I said, so that's my issue that God's still working on. And I turned the service over to the preacher, and the preacher said, stood there for a minute and just looked at me, okay? And said, how about, preacher, you come down off the platform and standing right there in the middle, and everybody that wants to show your love to the preacher for coming here, knowing he wasn't getting paid, but came because he loved people. And even though he's struggling with love, he loved being with us. I was a little bit awkward about that. Okay, I was a little bit nervous about that as people got up out of their pews and didn't just tell me they loved me, but hugged me, okay? And whispered in my ear, I love you. Or thank you for bringing the word of God. Wow, ah. faith, the substance of things hoped for. You want a quick therapy lesson, there it is right there. There it is right there. Man, I broke, I cried. I haven't preached a revival or preached that I don't forget that experience that God Almighty did, okay? Through his people, okay? I can't name one person. But the preacher, I remember, I preached a couple revivals at, uh, since then at uh, her church. But, but God has a way of teaching us things that we cannot see. I love this scripture. Faith is the thing, is the substance of things, hope for the evidence of things not seen. We try and go to the evidence right off the bat. I don't know why we're kind of built that way, I think. Show me the evidence, Lord. Show me the evidence of faith. And I can have faith. You know, Peter, getting out of the boat and walking to Jesus on the water. That's faith. That's faith. And then when he looked around and whoa, he sunk. Okay. Faith is something that we continue when we come to God, first of all, we have to remember two things about faith. One is that he is, okay? God's real. It's not something that's written in a book. Preachers talk about or Bible teachers talk about. He is real. Okay? And when you accept him as your personal savior, wow, the benefits that you have are unbelievable, okay? He wants to take care of you, okay? Now this uh, this week I was doing a Bible study. I do Bible studies myself a lot. I was doing a comparison of Psalms 21 and Psalms 121. He'll put a desire within your heart to, to hunger and thirst after his word. That's why I said, Lord, I am, you know, what I preach about. I was in number 16 reading that. Uh, those who tried to upshore authority over Moses that they were swallowed up, okay? Then I read um, where Caleb was a mighty warrior when they were divvying out the land. Joshua was divvying out the land. That Joshua and Caleb were the only two spies that gave a good report. The other 10 lied about things, okay? They were the only two that made it to the promised land. It's increasing my faith, okay? It's increasing my, I never put that in any devotions or anything else. That was strictly to build my faith. Because I truly believe whatever age I am, I've always believed this, God wants to work in me. But God can't work in me if I don't know who God is. 
that when the storms of life come, like we're in right now, that people say, I don't know what to do. You certainly don't want me saying, I don't either. Okay? Our relationship builds on God. Our confidence builds in God. The world sees the glass half empty. We see it half full. That walk in faith with God. Okay? The second thing that, that I need to know and be a part of in my faith is that not only do I believe he is and he's real, but I can pray and I know he rewards those who diligently seek him. Okay? When someone asks me to pray about something, I want to really perk my ears up and realize that my memory is not as good as it was a few years ago. Okay? And so I want to take that prayer request to God in belief that he's going to answer that. But that's not just some gossip little thing you're telling me and I go tell somebody else. Okay? And if need be, sometimes God says, I want you to pray with him right now. Right now I want you to pray for him. Don't tell him you're going to pray for him in a prayer group. You pray right now. Lord, we're an IGA. <laughs> says if you're ashamed of me publicly i'm ashamed of you before the father now you pray right now okay you're not trying to show off you're not trying to show how spiritual you are you're increasing their faith you're helping their faith okay at the same time you're exercising yours in me do you believe this stuff or not frank okay that that uh, evidence and that something's hoped for. You know, the Bible says hope deferred maketh the heart sick. If this was all of our lives, we're going to be in a pandemic for the next 20 years. Wow, there'd be a lot of people that would be pretty sad by that. Okay? I don't know when the end is, but in the meantime, I'm making the most to learn more about God than I knew before it started okay i i confess i've said this publicly i wouldn't have messed with the the web page on facebook at all had the pandemic not come okay i left that to linda and sandy okay and then when sandy said would you look into that as you and i faith increase this is where the favor of God comes. God does things through us that blows our mind because we're available to learn more about him. As we're sincere about increasing in faith, not getting egotistical, not getting big-headed, but we're sincerely interested in furthering the gospel of God. Okay? I have weird expectations probably. I expect one day that people will be playing these organs and pianos. I knew a guy named Jim McCall. Okay? Jim played in the spirit, as they would say. Okay? Jim would be playing while I'm preaching. Okay? Uh, Jim, I never stopped Jim. Okay? Okay? Go, buddy. You know, the Lord's working something here. And we would be having overcoals while Jim's playing and Frank's saying something or other, okay? Uh, I, I think of people playing the flutes when we have communion, okay? Been in services where I've been a part of that, okay? I'm not looking back when I say that. I'm looking forward, okay? That this building is for something greater than just a few of us, okay? But we're holding the fort. We're being faithful until that time comes. I really, I sincerely believe that. I believe in that, that great crowd of witnesses that are watching. That when I get up to preach, that my grandparents, my parents are in that crowd. And they're saying, that's some of my boy. You know, that's my grandson. Or, and God is saying, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. I really got excited like you did, I'm sure, if you were a Buckeye fan, OK? 
Okay? Okay. We've been beat. Four. This is going to be five, six, seven. How many more times? But there's a hope in me that maybe this will change it. Oh, and Clemson went down there and scored the first drive. And three and out for a Buckeye. I said, uh oh, oh, it's going to be a long night. Long night. Okay? My faith wavered there a little bit. But at the end of the game, I realized how many times I had been like that, that seen the giants in my life, okay? Like David that day, that he brought the food to his brothers who were supposed to be in battle, but instead they were hiding as Goliath pranced back and forth, called them out. Send me your leader and I'll fight and they'll fight and whoever wins, that's, who is the ruler and the other one serves. And David said, hey, he's calling out our God. He's calling out our men. What are we doing? What would happen if somebody took him down? They shoved this little kid off to, back to his herd. What's he doing? He went to Saul. Saul said, here, here's my armor. Are you serious about it? Get it. He put all the armor on, he couldn't move. No. He said, I'm going to have to take this off. I, I can't go out to battle with this. You earned this. This is your honor. This is your helmet. This is your breastplate. This is your sword. I'm going to just take my slingshot. Okay? A little bag there. I'll, I'll get me some stones. Because when I look over the flock, my dad's flock by day and night, I killed the lion. I killed the bear. I'm familiar with my weapons here. So he picked up four, put them in his pouch. I love this kind of stuff. I like the little details I read the scripture. Goliath had four big brothers, okay? He had four other brothers, okay? He put four rocks in there and he had the other one in his slingshot. Goliath was so mad that this little kid came out of nowhere. That's it? That's your guy? Boom. First hit right between the eyes. Boom. He goes down. David cuts off his head, holds it up. The Philistines left. Okay. I don't know about you, but I know the imagery there, the giants in my life that God worked through me and we took them out. Okay. We took them down. Okay. In this day and time we live in, the church is really silent about pandemic. I, I'm, I'm looking for religious leaders to speak out something, say something, okay? God says, I'm preparing a whole different group of people to lead in the future. These ones who have used me to further their own so that they can have jets parked here or money in their pocket and exploited poor people. I'm not using those, Frank. I'm using you and common, ordinary people to increase people's faith in me, okay? It's about me. It's not about them. It's not about you, Frank. So you need to decrease so he can increase. And you increase by exercising your faith. Some folks would see faith as, oh boy, now what? Okay, now what? Whereas people of faith will look and say, Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Okay. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Man, that third verse, I'll read the second because I don't want to skip over it. For by it the elders obtained a good report. This whole chapter is about good reports of people who exercise their faith. Abel, Abraham, Samson. But this third verse, I'm going to wrap it up here. Through faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. Think about that. Think about that. The worlds were framed by the word of God. These folks who have cut God out, shoved God out, and thought they did it, they got a new coming up and coming. 
were framed by the word of God so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. Okay, Remember the scene? You can see it in the Old Testament where Elijah said to his servant, go there and look in the water. Did you see anything? Sent him back seven times. Seven times. Finally he said, yeah, there's a fist coming up out of there. Hadn't rained on Israel in almost three and a half years. And it poured down the rain. Poured down the rain. Okay? God makes things appear so that we can see beyond our faith to something tangible. He doesn't leave you out there hanging. He doesn't have you say something like, I think Elijah with the prophets of Baal, 750 and one over here. So you go first and call your God from heaven. Boom. They cut themselves and then he started to mock them. Maybe your God's somewhere else. Maybe he's doing something else. And then he called the fire down and consumed the sacrifice that he had for God. Okay. You can't focus on what you see Faith is the substance of things hoped for, okay? The evidence of things not seen. So I hope you don't take that the wrong way and just think, oh, it's my faith. It's your faith in God. It's your faith in God. It's not your faith in me. It's not my faith in me. It's not your faith in you. It's your faith in God that we're going to see ourselves through this pandemic, that we're going to see ourselves through the turmoil that's in the world, that we're going to come to a place of rest in Him, a place that the Prince of Peace, the Prince of Peace, will rest in the hearts of men and women. I'm getting ready for the big revival. I'm getting ready for the big revival. I'm getting ready for just when you think, man, oh man, we're out of it, whatever. I don't understand things that I'm trying to help my middle son. I'm shocked that the church sold to make money and just walked away from God. How do you think that's going to work out? Okay, You don't walk away from God. You don't make vain merchandise from God. This has been dedicated to God. I'm not going to say if some billionaire would come by and say, you know, I just want to level that church. I'm willing to give it 14 million. What would you do? Okay. Hey, I'm a member. I'm thinking about my cut. Okay. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not unto your own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct your path. Let us pray. Lord, we're strengthened by your faith. We're encouraged, Lord, by things that we don't see, but hope. We thank you for the hope in our heart, the hope in our minds. And we come to you at this